In this video, I'm going to show how to fold up basic box shape patterns. This vessel is made by my teacher, Mark Ferris, and you can see that it's basically a box with a handle, a spout, a lid, and some feet added to it. So the box is basically the body of the vessel. Here's a sketch developing the pattern for the shape and then cutting it out. The solid lines are for cutting and the dashed lines can be for folding or creasing. This is a half pattern in order to make it fit on eight and a half by 11 paper. So you're going to have to cut out two of these and join them together along that zigzag edge. I'm gonna save this pattern to use with clay and I'll actually just transfer it to a larger piece of drawing paper. You don't have to do any of this perfectly. This is just a paper pattern, but it does make sense to be as accurate as you can because then parts will fit together better. When you work with clay, of course, you can stretch the clay a bit if you need to. This pattern is a big arc actually because the top of the box is a little narrower than the bottom. And if you look at it, you can see there's four sides there. Here I'm creasing or bending a place where I know the form changes direction quite suddenly. You'll tape this together the same as the patterns you've made before. What I do first is join the long seam and sorry it's a little bit out of frame here, but you'll see in a second that I basically have a cone shape. Since you already have experience with darts, you can imagine what happens next. I'm basically just going to join the edges of where the darts are cut out of the pattern. And we'll see what kind of a 3D form we end up with. Since you've already done straight-sided darts, you can imagine how this goes before you even do it. That's the whole point of the previous exercise that we did. There's no bottom to this vessel in the pattern. If I were making this out of clay, I would just cut a square of clay to piece in there. I'm going to make this exact pattern again increase all of the edges where the form can fold. And I intentionally didn't crease this one so you can see the difference between the two ways of doing the exact same pattern. Now of course this looks just like the drawing I made. It's the reason I enjoy making pots from patterns so much because I can actually design them first and then figure out how the pattern works, and then figure out different ways to use the same pattern. Here I'm starting on the second version, and I'm going to actually fold the paper. And you'll see a couple ways of doing this. This is where a tinsmith working with sheet metal would use a metal break to crease the form. I can just do it with my fingers. This already looks totally different than the last one I made. Here I'm creasing the paper over the sharp edge of my ruler. You could use the edge of a table or anything that has a sharp corner on it to do this. This one is clearly going to be easier to tape together. Since I already know this is going to work, I'm just going to use scotch tape. Usually I use the blue painter's tape so I can take things apart and make changes if I need to. Now that I have that together, it seems like I should 
change the tape on the other one as well. So I'll probably just do that. You can already see the difference between the form that has the edges bent or creased and the soft-sided form next to it. Now, paper and clay are very different materials. It's pretty easy to make these sharp edges with paper, but clay tends to look a bit more like the soft-sided form. Now we'll switch and make pattern B, and I'm going to cut the darts two different ways. First straight, and then with that curve. So we'll make two different shapes again, using the same basic pattern. I made the patterns the same way as with the last one, and again, you have a half pattern on 8.5 by 11 paper, so you need two of them to make the four sides. And this time what I did differently was I staggered where the darts were. So rather than being above each other, I alternated where the darts were. And if you look at the pattern, you can pretty clearly see how I did that. I really enjoy watching the paper pattern take a three-dimensional shape here. It seems like all that drawing and cutting is worth it, after all. So once again, I'll join the long seam first and then fold in the darts. And this time, because the darts are curved, it's going to take a little bit more fooling around to get the edges of the paper to align. I found that I had to actually cut the tape into thinner strips to get it to cooperate. It looks quite different, and it's pretty interesting to have curves instead of sharp creased lines. And of course you have to remember these are almost exactly the same pattern. The only difference is the shape of the darts. It seemed like I needed something to finish off this form, and so I'll really quickly turn it into something that looks like a vase. Two different shapes from almost the same pattern. The two different patterns, pattern B on the left and pattern A on the right. Which one do you like better? In case you're curious, this is where I work. I go back and forth between the small drafting table and my desk 